What's up, everybody? Happy Wednesday. Hope all you're having a great day so far today. Getting into this episode of GH. So we finally find out what the hell is the connection between Cody and Scott. So apparently Cody is Dominique's son, not Scott's son. I was thinking the good Lord and the baby Jesus because I was about to say, do not saddle Scott with this grifter. Please. Scott done had kids come out the woodwork over the years. A couple kids. You had Franco. You had Logan. Um, last thing he need is another child right about now that he did not know nothing about. And Cody, mm, no, I wouldn't wish him on my worst enemy, but apparently that's Dominique's son and Dominique is Scott's late wife, um, Serena's biological mother. Um, so basically Cody found out Dominique was his mother, his biological mother, and he wants his fair share of her estate. So, if I remember correctly, Dominique got her money from her ex-husband, her ex-late husband, because I remember she divorced him. Um, I forgot what his name was, Leo? Leopold? Something like that? It was some some old-ass name, Leopold or something like that. Leopold, something, something like that. I know that she was married to him back in the day, and that marriage wasn't really happy. Um, so, she ended up, you know, divorcing him, and I think she was in love with Mac at the time. But he was still in love with Holly or something. He was something like that. She had a crush on somebody. Um, but it ended up, you know, sending her to Scott. So her and Scott ended up getting together. And that's when she found out she was sick and stuff like that. Um, and I do remember she came into a fortune because her ex-husband ended up dying. I think uh, due to the mob ties or something he had or the cartel or something he was dealing with. And he ended up dying. So he left Dominique his entire fortune, his money, his mansion. Um, and I believe she renamed that mansion Serenity or something like that. And when she died, if memory serves me correct, if she when she died, I think she left her fortune, her money and her mansion that she got from her ex-husband. She left it equally, I believe, to Scott and Serena at the time of her death. And by the looks of it, Scott and Serena asked them been blowing through that money. Because Scott pretty much was like, listen, Serena ain't got no money. Because Cody, he did his homework on Serena. He was like, she been using her money to save the wells and donate to all these causes and stuff. So pretty much she kind of blew through Dominique's money. And we all know whatever money Dominique left Scott, he been blew through that shit. I remember Scott Ash used to have a sailboat. I do remember that. Scott did have a sailboat. and He was, you know, tra traveling all around with the sailboat. So Scott pretty much been living the lap of luxury over the years, and he done blew through all that, that fortune that Dominique done left. So it ain't much left. And Cody want his fair share. Cody was like, oh, I just want my share or whatever. Brother, how you going to get nothing? There's nothing left. That money was given to them over 20 years ago. There's nothing left of that money. Scott blew through his money. Serena done blew through hers. You better find out where the mansion at if they sold that or not. Because if you could find that Serenity Mansion or whatever, then you might be in luck. You might have an asset, but the most he could do is file a claim. But if there's nothing left for the estate, you're not going to get anything. So, ain't no point. Like, you waited all this time. Like, how long ago did you find out that was your mom? And you waited all this long. He got to be about late 30s. Because him and Dante was around the same age. So, you got to be about early 40 then. So, when did you find out that was your mom? Like, you just now trying to come in and stake a claim you should have been did that because that money long gone brother um i love how lisa just didn't give a damn like lisa be defending her man she don't play about scott i love that shit she do not play about scott um dante of course had to come and arrest cody for punching scott in the face if i was scott i would have got me a good left hook on his ass but you know lisa had him now lisa took care of that real quick um but yeah, Cody, he he waited too long. Like, sorry, sir, but you waited way too long to stake your claim. It's a wrap. The money's gone. Get over it. So anyway, Spinelli, you know, him and Maxie was, you know, having a little spa day or whatever, doing some mani petties or whatever. And she was wondering about him and Britt and stuff like that because she know that they definitely are not an ideal couple. And, you know, Spinelli had to keep up the little charade or whatever. But my thing with Spinelli is he need to grow a backbone. Like, he need to put Cody in his place. Cause I'm getting tired of Cody thinking that he's going to try Spinelli every minute. Like, we're not going to do this. Spinelli needs to, you know, man up. And where the hell is Austin at? Because he had called Maxi or whatever. And I'm like, what the hell is going on with Austin? Because we rarely see him. I, I just feel like that whole character was a lost cause. Like, they don't show him enough. 
we don't see him enough. Like, they got a storyline going with him and this mystery person he working for. And then we got the Elizabeth stuff that we don't get to see on a regular basis. Like, they need to get control. <laughs> like, we got lingering storylines and we don't even know what the hell going on. Because they don't be on for so long. Like, come on now, get it together. Um. So, anyway, moving on from that. Spencer is getting on my nerves with his little white privilege. Like, he is really working my nerve. Told my, oh, I don't understand why I have to go back to prison. I was only gone for a few hours. Sir, your privilege is showing. Your privilege is showing. Picture any one of us of less resources, especially a minority or of lesser resources than him, sneaking out of prison or finding a way to get out of prison. They would grind our ass into dog meat if we did that. Like, come on now. No. Go your ass to prison, shut up, and, and, you know, keep your head down. So, Sonny came up in there to pretty much let him know, like, listen, I got people on the inside. They're going to be looking out for you. Just go in there and shut up. Keep your head down. Shut your mouth. um, And do your time. Because pretty much he going to have to serve a whole nother month. I would have gave his ass more than that. Because a month is way too generous. That's that privilege. Um, So, he probably got to serve a whole nother month. This time, he not going back to Spring Ridge, though. He going to Pentonville. He, you know, with the hardened criminals. Um, so, you know, Sonny got some backup in there for him or whatever. He was like, you know, just go in there and keep your mouth shut. You know, don't don't act no fool. Um, so, basically, Jordan, I guess, had offered Spencer a deal on the behalf of the DA's office. Like, if he rat out who helped him get out of there, then he may not have to go to prison at all. They might just wipe out the whole thing for him. Um, he may not have to even do a whole nother month. And he was wondering how Sonny felt about that, about being a rat. Sonny pretty much told him, he said, listen, in my world, being a rat is the lowest shit that you can be. But, uh, you know, Spencer did have to correct him. He was like, that's true, but I'm not in your world. I'm not in the mob world. Even not being in the mob, I mean, that old saying, snitches get stitches, is still alive and well. <laughs> I'm just saying, like, you just, snitch is a snitch. What are you going to do? It don't matter if you're in the mob or not. You're still a rat. I mean... Still the lowest form that you can be, I guess. Um, I say I guess because let me tell you something what I won't do. Me personally, I don't like ratting on nobody I, depending on what it is. But if it means my freedom and I have to go to prison and do time for you, I will jump my ass up in that court so fast with my hand held high. Like, listen, your honor, he did it, not me. Let me go. I want I want You know, I want to be exonerated here. I want immunity. I didn't do that shit. He did it. He done killed homeboy, not me. Listen, I would be a new fucking fool if I were to sit here and go to prison for any for anybody. It ain't going down. Hell no. Me in prison wouldn't work. <laughs> me in prison just we we don't go hand in hand, so that wouldn't work for me. Um, but you know, Sonny pretty much told him you gotta make a choice. He said whatever choice you make, you just gotta stick by it. Shit, you gotta make you know stick by your choice. But you know, Sonny was like, shit, I am proud of you for sticking up for Trina though. You know, doing what you had to do for her. Um, so anyway, Victor done called a little meeting amongst the Cassadines between him and Nicholas and Alexis. He basically wants Alexis to use the invader to help get Spencer out. I loved every second of that conversation. I'm going to tell you why. Because Alexis brought up a lot of key facts. Alexis said, no, I will not do that. She basically said, I'm not going to help Spencer get out of prison. He has to do the time. He has to go. It is what it is because she's not going to use her newspaper to exonerate somebody or help try to exonerate somebody who's clearly guilty. She said, do you know how bad that would look if I use the media, the press to help a white boy who committed a crime go free when you have a young black girl sitting on the trial of her life and she's innocent and she can go to prison? She said, do you know how much backlash we would get from that? And I totally agree. Not only is he a white boy who committed the crime, he's a white boy of privilege. That's even worse. Like, no, I love that Alexis stood up for that and said hell to the naw. To the naw, naw, naw. Hell no. I love it. I loved every second of it. Victor could get mad all he want to. It is what it is. But, you know, Alexis said what I will do is I will use the invader to help Trina. <laughs> she said, that's what I will do. You know, to build a case, to help build a, a case against Esme. I love that about Alexis. I love it. She stood up for it and I loved it. Like, people don't like when they talk about race on the show. But let me tell you something. If they did not bring up race during these storylines, it would be totally unrealistic. 
for what's going on. It would be totally unrealistic. So I'm glad that they did because people try to shy away from shit. It's like, no, that's the problem. That's why I don't nothing get fixed or people are ignorant towards things because it's not being discussed. That's the issue. So I'm glad that they are discussing it. Same way Portia and Stella had that conversation a while back about race. I'm glad they, they're doing it because it needs to be said. It is what it is. Like, come on now. Let's be real. You know, minorities, a lot of us, we can't do the shit that Spencer or, or another white boy would do. You know what I mean? Like, we do that shit, we getting fried. People of, you know, a privilege, you know, white privilege and all that stuff, they do something or they get a little time out. You know what I mean? Us, we, we go on to the damn pen for a very long time. It's the, it's the realness of it. It's, it's true. Um, And I'm glad that she's using the invader for something good. You helped Trina out. The hell with Spencer. That boy looking at a month. This girl's looking at years for something she didn't even do. I'm glad Alexis is going to help her. Hell yes. You know, and Victor offered to, you know, track down Esme, but Nicholas was like, uh. <laughs> Nicholas was like, I don't know about all that. She gone. <laughs> Nicholas no good and well. He ain't gonna find that girl. You could look all day long. You ain't gonna find her. So anyway, um, moving on from that, that whole scene between Drew and Valentine irked my soul. Like Drew need to get the hell on somewhere. That little weak ass power move he tried to make, like he really thought that was gonna work. Like, really? If I was Valentine, I would have told him, listen, I would have laughed in his face, told him, get the hell on, because that ain't, they ain't flying with me. He really came up to Valentine talking about, oh, I want to offer you a deal. You hand back ELQ to the Quartermains. Basically, I'll take ELQ off your hands. In exchange, I'll take down Victor for you. Valentine had that look at first, like, yeah, no, thank you. But then he started, you know, kind of interested in the idea. He started thinking it over. I'm like, Valentine, don't even, don't you even dare entertain this foolishness. You're going to trust Drew of all people to take down Victor? If Drew could take down Victor, what does that say about Valentine? Valentine is way more cutthroat and ruthless than Drew. So if a person of Valentine's status and stature can't take down Victor, what the hell think, make Drew think he can do it? And this man held Drew captive for two years, and Drew has not yet gotten revenge on him. For holding him captive. He took that man away from his child for two years. And he still has not gotten revenge on him. So why does Drew think all of a sudden he can do it now? Since when? If you could do it now, you would have been done it months ago. But you didn't. So I don't I don't have no faith that Drew can do do it at this point. I really don't. And if I was Valentine, I would laugh in his face, tell him to kick rocks. Get on somewhere with that weak ass, that weak deal. Because that's pretty much what it was. A weak ass deal. Um... Anna kind of offered Martin an even better deal. She want the scoop on Valentine. She want him basically to get information out of Valentine because she want the truth about what's really going on with him. And she knows that Martin can do it. And she's going to kind of coach him on how to do it. And Martin was like, okay, or I can snitch on you and tell Valentine what you're up to. Anna wasn't, please, Anna was not worried about that little shit he was talking. She was like, listen. I ain't worried about what you're talking because trust me, you're going to need me a lot more than I'm going to need you right about now because she pulled the receipts. Anna pulled out all the receipts on Martin. She said, oh, I know about you hiding money from your three crazy ass ex-wives. <laughs> that had Martin shut when she brought that up. The fact that he hide money from his three ex-wives, oh, she shut him down quick with that knowledge. He ain't had nothing to say on that one. I bet you he turned into her little bitch real quick. He said, okay, okay, I'll help you. You damn right you're going to help her. You better help her get some information. That's the only way you, is either that or she going to turn loose. She going to turn them dogs loose on you. She trying to help you keep them three crazy ass women off your ass. It's either that or, or they're going to be chopping off every bit of it. He ain't got no choice but to do what she said. And you better get to it and get some good information too. Don't come back with no foolishness. You better give her some good intel. I like the way Anna handled that. She said, no, no, no. You're going to do what I tell you to do. She said, otherwise, it's going to be your ass in a minute. Um. So anyway, moving on from that, um, Nina and Ava had met up and whatnot. You know, she was talking about, you know, her and Sonny becoming a, an official couple and stuff like that. Um. I mean, if Nina and Sonny want to be a couple, go on ahead and be a couple. Do what y'all do. Congratulations. I don't really give a shit, but congratulations. <laughs> we'll see how long this lasts. Um. Because I got a feeling it's going to be a hot mess. 
But then she was asking, you know, Ava about her marriage and stuff. And Ava was like, listen, I ain't trying to tell you nothing because I don't want to make you an assessor. <laughs> I so agree with Ava. It's like, no, nah, don't tell her nothing because you tell her something. Now you're bringing her into it. Now she's a part of a, a little criminal case now. Because once you tell her about it, she she's involved now. So I, I definitely get where Ava is coming from. She said, no, nah, I ain't about to tell you nothing. I'm going to keep it to myself because I do not want to bring this to you and involve you in this foolishness. Um... So anyway, that was pretty much the whole episode. Um, hit the comment section. Let me know what you all thought about it. And I will see you all later. I hope you all have a great night. Peace.